Welcome to part 2 of the Submarine tutorial. Today I will dive into some advanced expression logic and user controls to retime one camera track based on the angle of another camera. This technique allows you to do shots where a live action camera move was shot on stage, but a different move is desired for the final shot. If you remember the first part was all about stabilizing the jittery turntable move. We went from this shaky plate to a slightly smoother version of the camera track. You can see the black edge disappearing as a sign that the plate is transformed a little bit. But that wasn't the desired result. Instead, we redesigned the camera move completely. This version here has a much more dramatic camera move. And the nice thing is that the stabilization was carried out in 3D space, which means that we can use the newly designed camera for lots of other things like particle systems and so on. One thing, however, still annoys me. The smooth camera move still has a duration of 84 frames because we had to keep up with the original projection camera. I'd like to slow this shot down, after all we're supposed to be underwater. This is the new tutorial comp that you can download from my website. It's now 120 frames long. There are many ways to stretch the camera move. You can go to the spline editor and use the T-scale button since Fusion 6.3 it has a context menu that allows you to define the pivot for scaling the keyframes. In earlier versions Fusion always used the current time. Another solution is the shape box that you can activate by pressing Shift B once you have selected a couple of keys. So let's play back the comp. You can see both cameras in the viewer, the original one that's used for projecting the footage and the new slow camera move. The original camera has finished its move after 84 frames while the new camera is still turning. This can't look good. If I switch to the custom path camera you can see that we're looking at the image plane at a very steep angle. This distorts the submarine a lot. Then the projection camera stops and we're still finishing the move over the last few frames. Of course, there's a solution to this problem. We need to retime the projection camera so it matches our new path. We could slow it down by the same amount that we used to slow down our smooth path. But even in the last tutorial's version, there was a slight mismatch between the camera angles, so we should be looking for a better and more flexible solution now. Let's have a look at the cameras. At this frame, for example, we are filming the image plane at a certain angle. In an ideal world, the projection would also be happening from the same angle. So we have to look for a frame where the projection camera has a matching angle of rotation and this is exactly what I did with this camera here. I'll explain the steps I took in a minute. As you can see, the new projection camera still follows its original path, but it has been retimed in a non-linear fashion, so it lines up behind the scene camera at all times. And it goes without saying, that retiming the projection camera isn't enough. The footage itself also has to be retimed in the same manner. Let's build this comp step by step. This is the original camera in its original Y rotation. It runs from 90 degrees at frame 0 to almost 0 degrees at frame 84. That's the way I designed the turntable shot by the way, roughly 1 degree of rotation each frame. We need to figure out at which frame the camera has a certain angle. Let's say 60 degrees. We have this lookup curve here which tells us the angle at each frame. What we need is the inverse function so to speak. A lookup table that tells us the frame number based on the angle. If we try to eyeball this, you notice that the exact degree isn't available on a full frame number. It's somewhere between frame 30 and 31. To get exact results, we need to invert this curve. This isn't a feature available in Fusion, but it can easily be scripted, and that's what I did. But first, since we're gonna need some expressions and custom sliders as well, I'll create a tool to host these. I'll add a time stretcher as this will be necessary for retiming the plate anyways. Let's get rid of this animation first and disable frame blending. We need to add a slider to hold the inverted lookup curve. Let's call it Angle Lookup.
Here it is on the user tab. And we need to connect it to the projection camera's Y rotation. Then I'll run my tool script to invert the animation curve. You can find the script on VFXpedia or in the downloadable archive for this tutorial that's available on my website. So here's the inverted curve. The time slider has to be interpreted as an angle now. The value of the animation curve is the frame number. So to get back to our previous example, to figure out on which frame the camera had an angle of 60 degrees, we need to jump to the 60 and read the curve's value, as expected between frame 30 and 31. Or another example, 10 degrees of rotation was reached at frame 80. The second piece to our puzzle is figuring out the angle between the submarine and our new camera. This will be calculated by an expression modifier and I have already prepared this earlier. That's a time stretcher like we had created before. It just has one more user slider called camera angle. To calculate the angle we need to use basic trigonometry in 3D space. We need the location of the camera, which we have, and the location of the image plane. We can't get this information directly, so I've just placed the locator tool where I think the plane is. It's not 100% exact, but it doesn't have to be. So, now that we have our two points in 3D space, we can calculate the angle. I have already connected an expression modifier to the camera angle slider. The parameters we need are the camera's X and Z coordinates, as well as the locator's X and Z coordinates. The angle we need is simply the arctangent of the X difference and the Z difference. As you can see, the calculation works. It returns values from 90 degrees to about 5 at the end. Using all of this, we can finally figure out the necessary retiming curve to place the projection camera at the proper angle during the whole animation. An expression on the time stretcher's source time slider is all we need. To look up the value of the angle lookup spline at an arbitrary frame number, we need to use the self get value function and query angle lookup at the value returned by camera angle. This will be used to retime the footage, but we need to retime the camera motion as well. For this, I'll simply create a copy of the projection camera and remove all animation curves. They will be replaced by expressions that will look up values of the projection camera's animation splines, but not at the current frame, but at the frame indicated by the time stretcher. Once again, we have to use the getValue function. The first parameter is the attribute we want to query. Point the mouse at the slider to read its scripting name in the status bar. The second parameter is the frame number. In this case, the retime tool's source time value. A similar expression needs to be added to the Y and Z translation, as well as the Y rotation. And presto, the projection camera will now project from behind the scene camera during the whole shot. 
It's still constrained to its original motion path though. The alignment is done by retiming only. And keep in mind that this is all dynamic. I could still adjust my smooth camera path and the expressions would update interactively. One thing can be observed towards the end of the shot. It's a jittery motion due to duplicate frames. This is because the projection requires subframe accuracy but the time stretcher only returns full frames. In the tutorial comp that's available for download, I have used optical flow retiming using Speedo to fix this. You could use Twixter as well, of course. As you can see, the resulting clip is really smooth now. Of course, this only worked because there was no movement in the plate that prevented us from retiming it the way we wanted. Had it been a shot of people walking around, this would have been impossible. Alright, that completes my 3D stabilization tutorials. Using the techniques I've shown you, you can integrate live action plates into modified camera moves. In this example, the actor was integrated in a full CG car and the camera moved that was changed considerably from what was shot.